Hello there. My name is Mark Fine. I'm the author of The Zebra Affair. It's a work of literary fiction and it tells the story of Elza, a white woman who dared to challenge the racist regime of apartheid South Africa. She is hunted down by the regime's security apparatus for the crime of falling in love with Stanwell, a black man. It would be my pleasure to read an excerpt of The Zebra Affair for you. I hope you enjoy it. Luxury is a fleeting panacea. In its plush embrace, the grittiness of reality fades, but only momentarily. Unlike the arid earth transformed into fertile soil with the first seasonal rains, luxury is always parched and rarely changes anything of consequence. But a brief escape, a respite from life's harsh edge, is a wonderful thing. Such was their one night stay at the Landros Hotel. Stanwell welcomed Elza at the sweet door. The surprise expression on her face met the amazement on his. They never said a word. She draped herself languidly within the ardent embrace of his outstretched arms. Elsa relished the lavish suite, courtesy fruit basket, luxury bath and body potions, and crisp bed linens. But the fact their forbidden love was now known and accepted by their mentors made her giddy with relief. The sneaking about, snatching at crumbs had exhausted her. Finally, she had time and space to get to know Stanwell better in a manner that was delectably tranquil and comfortable. Elza studied his deep brown eyes, full lips and radiant white, though not perfectly straight teeth. She considered his powerful worker's hands and sensitive, respectful demeanor, and realized it was this singular dichotomy that touched her. She felt it was safe when he was close. To her, he was gentle, but he had also proven an able protector, as evidenced by his forceful display against those hapless thugs in the elevator. It was the stuff of childhood fantasy, the fluff of fairy tales, but this was real life. He truly saved her. He was her champion, and now the night was there. It was a night of revelation and exploration. He taught her some of his native ways, how the soft foliage of one tree served as perfect bush toilet paper, the leaves of another warded off evil spirits, and the succulent leaf of the aloe was a one-stop bush pharmacy, a remedy for sunburn, insect bites, and bruising, with the thorn itself a pre-threaded sewing needle. She asked him how his teeth were so shiny and white, how she wished for a million-dollar smile. He showed her. Taking a twig from the floral arrangement on the dresser, he crushed the end of it with his teeth until the tip resembled the fibers of a brush. He then pantomimed the dipping of the crude toothbrush and charcoal ash, vigorously brushed, and then spat out the phantom granules, to her horror as a lady never spits. She explored his face. Tenderly, she peeled at the pimples breaking out in his skin, revealing glittering blast chips from the car accident, as Dr. White had predicted. With each discovery, Elsa squealed with delight, as she had found alluvial diamonds in fertile soil. He, in turn, explored her face and noticed again the faint scar across her chin, the consequence of a horse riding accident when a diagonal wire cable which supported a telephone pole swept her by the throat off the back of the horse. One foot had remained trapped in a stirrup, so Elder was dragged on her chin, thankfully at a leisurely pace, as the errant mount had slowed to graze tufts of grass by the side of the road. They reveled in the fact that scarred chins were something they had in common. That was until Stanwell told her the technique his people used to soak chin wounds. The mandibles of decapitated fire ants were ideal sutures in the bush, with their clawed teeth used to pinch the gash together. Elsa was understandably skeptical. Then she became pensive. Simba, she began. She insisted on calling him that because it meant lion in Swahili. Despite his protestations that Simba was a popular brand of potato chips. You do know I love you, don't you? 
That's real liquor, as I do you, he replied. Please say it. Elza, I love you, he said simply, realizing there was nothing simple about it. Newspaper headlines exclaimed, Zebra Affair, white supermodel and black domestic servant in city sexcapade shocker. Johannesburg, Saturday. The meteoric career of modeling sensation Elsa Maria may well be in freefall tonight after a sexual indiscretion with an unknown black man was revealed today. The two were spotted this morning leaving the Landros Hotel together. Her companion has not as yet been identified, but is understood he works for her in a domestic capacity or serves as her Bantu driver. Authorities comment. At this time, it is unclear how the couple circumvented the staff at the downtown five-star hotel, but the authorities are making inquiries. An officer at John Foster Square, when asked, said there will be an investigation and if a crime has been committed, there will be consequences. When pressed further about whether the couple must be caught in the act to ensure a successful prosecution, the officer confidently replied, Of course, these people are predictable. You know zebras cannot change their stripes. Malzander gloated. He slapped down the folded newspaper on an unsuspecting fly. The creature had the cheek to buzz around his treatly sweet treat. With childlike satisfaction, he inspected the doomed insect, dismissed it with a flick, and then licked the stained newspaper print of his gooey fingers. Eating sticky cook sisters, a deep-fried concoction of twisted dough dipped in syrup, Puffing on a smoldering cigarette and reading the newspaper simultaneously was proving a challenge. Never mind, the newspaper's late edition was immensely gratifying. Usually Zand read the back pages first, the salacious gospel, and tawdry pictures invigorated him before the sports columns and front page headlines. Tonight, however, all he needed was the back page. His prey had slipped away into his trap and it was all there in black and white for the entire world to see. Nastily, Xander branded their faces with his cigarette stub. The telltale photographs were damning. One showed an interracial couple exiting a downtown hotel. She wore dark glasses and a headscarf, and he, his tie askew, had his jacket covering their apparently clasped hands. The other image was from the Grand Prix, showing the same white woman carried in the arms of the same black man. This time he wore indigenous tribal clothing. It had been so easy for Xander. Paparazzi always staked out the hotel in their quest to catch the celebrities at play, and his shill at the paper was happy to oblige the security branch. Regarding the need to catch the interracial couple, in flagrante delicto, well, that wouldn't be necessary. The soiled bed linens had already been retrieved by squat from a now very cooperative hotel housekeeper. Zand had all the proof he needed. What was once a private vendetta was about to become a very public affair. The Zebra Fair can be purchased at Amazon. It's available both as a paperback and in the Kindle format. Thanks so much. Goodbye.